single phase full converter. This is like bridge circuit where the supply is given to the terminals A and B and the load is in between the terminals C and D. When the supply is given through the transformer primary, the secondary is going to have the voltage Vs which is given to the circuit then the terminal A is positive and the terminal B is negative. In this case, thyristor T1's anode is positive, thyristor T2 cathode is in negative. Thyristor 4 cathode is positive, and thyristor 3 anode is negative. For the conduction of a thyristor, thyristor must be in forward biased. T1 is in forward biased and T2, here it is 0 and here it is negative, so T2 is also in forward biased, whereas T3 and T4 are in reverse biased condition initially. So we can turn on T1 and T2 since both are in forward biased. When Vs is positive in positive half cycle, we can turn on T1 and T2 by giving a firing signal or firing voltage. This is our input signal during the positive half cycle that is omega t is 0 to 5. When the Vs is negative, it is in negative half cycle that is pi to 2 pi, the terminal A is negative and the terminal B is positive. Then T1's anode is negative, T4's cathode is negative, T3 anode is positive, T2 cathode is positive. T3 and T4 are in forward bias and T1, T2 are in reverse bias. In negative half cycle, the resistors T3 and T4 can turn on by giving a firing. So, here T1 and T2 can turn on, this period T3 and T4 can turn on and again T1, T2 can turn on. This is going to repeat again and again. I am connecting load R or else simply a resistive load. Then we will be having two types of operations that is discontinuous and continuous operation. This continuous operation we can achieve by firing the thyristors with an angle alpha. First we will discuss about the discontinuous operation. Let's suppose in positive half cycle I am firing the thyristors T1 and T2 since both are in forward biased with an angle alpha. Let this be alpha. Then this two thyristors starts conducting and the current flows from A2 through the thyristor T1 to the terminal C and the load R to the D back to T2 and back to the B where AB is the input terminals. The current is going to flow in this direction. When you observe the current is flowing from the C to D. This is positive terminal and negative terminal. This is V0. I am turning on the thyristors at alpha. The input voltage which is present at an alpha is going to appear across the output. Then this is going to follow the input until pi. After omega t is equals to pi, the input voltage is negative. That is, negative half cycle is going to start. In this time, T3 and T4 will be in forward biased. So, I need to turn on these two at an angle alpha in negative half cycle, where the T1 and the T2 is going to turn off by line commutation or by natural commutation, since both became reverse biased. This two are in forward biased. Now the current flows from B to T3, T3 to terminal C, C to R, R to D, D to T4, T4 to A. Here the negative voltage is going to flow through the resistor in the same terminals that is positive to negative V0. At pi plus alpha, the voltage present at the input is going to appear at the output even though the input voltage is negative the current flowing through the resistor direction is not changing i am taking this as a positive again then the input voltage appears across the output at omega t is equal to 2 pi this process repeats meanwhile t3 t4 goes to turn off position by line of natural commutation this process is again going to start as it started when omega t equal to 0. This is our output voltage. And since the circuit is in break mode from 0 to alpha, it's not going to conduct and it will be present when the circuit is in operation. 
the output is also present when the input is present. This is our output. Since the output is discontinuous, this type of operation is known as discontinuous operation. Now, average output voltage V0 is given by VDC is equals to 1 by pi. Since what is happening between the 0 to pi is also going to happen in the 0 to 2 pi or else it is symmetrical integral from alpha to pi Vs is present that is Vm sin omega t d omega t. When I integrate this, I am going to get Vm by pi minus cos omega t between alpha to pi. When I substitute that, I am going to get Vm by pi minus cos pi minus of minus plus cos alpha. Then I am going to get Vm by pi 2 cos alpha this is my VDC or else average output voltage and this is maximum that VDC is max when cos alpha equals to 1 alpha equals to 0 degrees. Then VDC max equals to 2 Vm by normalized output voltage V normal equals to V average output divided by maximum average output that equals to Vm by pi cos alpha divided by Vm by pi which equals to cos alpha. Now the RMS output voltage V RMS equals to 1 by pi integral alpha to pi Vm square and square omega t d omega t under the square root. You can use the formula that sin square theta equals to 1 minus cos 2 theta by 2. Now you can simplify this Vm square by pi integral alpha to pi 1 minus cos 2 omega t d omega t under the square root by 2 and taking that 2 out of the integration. Vm square divided by 2 pi pi minus alpha sine 2 omega t by 2 by 2 alpha is all under the square root. Then Vm square by 2 pi pi minus alpha by 2 outside sine 2 pi minus sine 2 alpha under the square root. Vm by root 2 of 1 by pi pi minus alpha plus sine 2 alpha by 2 under the square root. This is the RMS output voltage. Now until now we have seen the discontinuous operation of single phase full converter with our load. Now let us see how to achieve the continuous operation. As soon as the voltage shift from positive to negative and negative to positive. We need to turn on the respective thyristors. That is nothing but we need to make alpha equals to 0 degrees. Then if this alpha is equal to 0 degrees, then this is going to shift towards 0. Then the input voltage, whatever present at the input terminal is going to appear across the output. Then the output is like this. And in negative half cycle, we need to turn on the thyristor T3 and T4 immediately as soon as the input shifts from positive to a negative, then the output voltage, then again the input voltage. In that case, the input current is also available at all the time. Output current is also available at the same time. So output current becomes continuous. This is how we will get the continuous operation of a single phase full wave converter with R load. Then the average output will be seen. So the continuous operation is given by 1 by pi integral 0 to pi Vm sin omega t d omega t. Now let us see this that is Vm by pi sin is minus cos omega t from 0 to pi. Vm by pi minus cos pi minus of minus plus cos 0 minus cos pi 
is equals to 1 and the cos 0 equals to 1 which is 2. VDC equals to Vm by y. VDC is max at the same time. So normalized or to total Vn is given by the same value by same value that is 2 Vm by pi divided by 2 Vm by pi which is nothing but 1. RMS output value that is V RMS is equals to 1 by pi integral 0 to pi Vm square sin square omega t d omega t under the square root which equals to Vm square by pi sin is 1 minus cos 2 omega t by 2 all to the power of 1 by 2. This equals to Vm square by 2 pi this is integral 0 to pi pi minus 0 minus cos so it is plus sin 2 omega t by 2 from 0 to pi whole to the power of 1 by 2. Vm square by 2 pi of pi plus sin 2 pi by 2 minus sin 0 by 2 whole to the power of 1 by 2. Sin 2 pi is 0, sin 0 is 0, this value will be 0, pi will remain, pi pi gets cancelled, then you are going to get so Vm by root 2 V RMS equals to Vm by root 2.